It says, uh, they, and by the way, I'm in the NLT version, so your version won't quite match mine. There's a couple of scriptures here I really like that's in this version. It all makes sense. But uh, then Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. We'll jump to verse 8. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to all the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight, he called. I'm the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shamed. Bear me, Father, Lord. Bless this word, Lord, tonight, Lord. And bless me, Lord, as I'm prepared. Let me say what you'd have me to say and do what you'd have me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, they're setting up a, a battle here. And uh, the Israelites and the Philistines, of course, have all been mortal enemies for as far back in the Bible as they existed. But uh, Saul and his army are on one side of the valley, and the Philistine army is on the other side of the valley. Uh, they're in the uh, valley of uh, Elah, I believe is what it's called. And now these men are battle-hardened men. Saul only picked the best of the best to be in his army. And uh, in fact, right here, and I didn't give the scripture for this, but in 1 Samuel 14, 47, this, this will just speak to the, the valor of these men. It's like, now when Saul had secured his grasp on Israel's throne, he fought against the enemies in every direction. Against Moab, Ammon, Edom, the kings of Zobah, and the Philistines, and wherever he turned, he was victorious. He performed great deeds and conquered the Amalekites, saving Israel from all those who had plundered him. And then in 52, it said, The Israelites fought constantly with the Philistines throughout Saul's life. So whenever Saul observed a young man who was brave and strong, he drafted them into his army. So the men in this army weren't just draftees, they weren't just guys he pulled off the street. These men knew how to fight. They had grown up fighting. Uh, they had proven their valor over and over. So they're in this army and they're gathered here. And this one man, uh, sure, he was a giant. But still, he was one man. He come out and these men lose all hope, all faith. Everything that God had taken them through, they, they forgot. I mean, all the battles fought, all the victories, all the times the odds were against them. You know, they fought larger battles with fewer men. And every time, God saw them through. But this time, is different. They gave in to fear. Uh, he managed to do what every other enemy they ever faced had not been able to do. He caused them to give up their victory. Uh, even the mighty king Saul was afraid. He wasn't willing to go out there and face this man. In fact, he was uh, trying to offer rewards for someone else to go out and face him for it. And that's somewhat I want to talk about tonight, is... Uh, our loss of hope, our loss of victory. You know, all of us have uh, had times where we've been down and we've lost hope. We've lost sight of what God would have us to do. Uh, this world's really good at throwing things at you to make you lose hope, to make you forget. You know, whether, you know, it's a lose a boyfriend or a girlfriend or fail a test or lose a job. Uh, you know, everything is made 
really to make you feel bad out in the world. Uh, social media is a great example, especially with the kids. You know, if, in one way, it's a great thing. It can be made to help us connect with people and branch out and communicate. But at the same time, and even more so, it can be used to make you feel bad about yourself. Right, right. Um, right. It can make us feel inadequate. You know, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, yeah. I'm too short, I'm too poor. All these things, they're not pretty in this. You know, look what they did on vacation. Why don't we ever do that on vacation? You know, all these things. And it makes people feel bad. Uh, kids, it is a great way for kids to get bullied. And uh, if you look at, especially when school's in, suicide rates and things like that, from kids where, I mean, they, they get bullied, they get uh, beat around, and they lose hope. You know, it's even celebrities and sports people are heroes in life, aren't they? Look at how many of them in just the past few years have overdosed on drugs or committed suicide or done incredible violence, all because they've self-destructed due to a lack of hope, an inability to cope with things. You know, they're all facing a glock in their lives. You know, uh, and they're giving in to the same fear that the Israelite army gave them to. And of course, the enemy, he's loving. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, uh, 16 says, and this, this is one of the reasons I really picked the 17 verses here. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israelite army. Where's Blake at? Blake, give us a strut. <laughs> Show me <your> strut. <laughs> Like you're just all business. You're you're the king of a castle. Like if I'm like reading, if I'm like strutting past the army, or like I'm like. Oh, just like you're just strutting through the hall hallways of school. Like you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
sad, poor, pitiful me. And you know, I've got family members that are the same way. People that were, some of them raised in church, who know who to go to, who to pray to. But it's, they've forgotten. They've let the enemy steal their victory. Uh, you know, myself, I lost hope at times. You know, my mom passed away a few years ago, and you talk about someone hitting rock bottom, I was down there. And I wallowed in it for quite a while. And then prayer and church and getting back in the good book brought me back out of it. And I remembered my place, I remembered my victory. You know, we get in a dark place and we don't know what to do. And I'm sure Saul's army, many of those men, including Saul himself, felt the same way. But there's one person there who didn't feel that way. And uh, we got a, a second or First Samuel 17, 22 says. David left his saints with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. Now he was there, sent by his father to check on his brothers who were members of, his, of the army. And, uh, you know, he's a kid. He's probably, best estimate, probably 15 to 17 years old. He had to be at least 20 to be in the army. So, he's there checking on things. And uh, says, and as he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. And David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. And as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. So David goes out. He's a uh, probably, you know, typical kid. He's, he's excited. He's going to see these armies line up. He's probably thinking, man, while I'm there, I'm going to see something exciting happen. I'm going to see a battle. Possibly. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, things start to happen. The armies go out, they line up, they face each other. And, you know, any teenage boy would be excited about this. I mean, teenage boys, I remember, we're all about adventure and battle. I mean, this stuff's in our DNA. And uh, David, he wouldn't have been any different. And I'm sure he was probably happy to have been sent that day. And, but imagine what went through his mind when he saw these armies come out and face off. And this giant comes strutting out. And then all of his mighty army that he was there, that he believes in wholeheartedly, the army of God, cowers and runs away. Hmm. Well, 1726 says, and this is David's response. David asked the soldiers standing nearby, What will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Now that was his reaction. Instead of fear, he showed outrage. You know, who is this giant that he can go out and say the things that he's saying about God? You know, where are we at in life when we hear people saying bad things about the church or about God and we just sit there and we keep our mouth shut because we don't want to start anything or we don't want to get picked up in that fight or whatever. We'd rather just sit there and be quiet. Well, David wasn't willing to be quiet. You know, he started asking questions. He started going around asking the men. Well, Saul catches word of this. Sins for him. Well, Saul offers him the use of his armor and weapons and uh, offers all these rewards. You know, how many times are we too scared to fight our own battles? Mm. And instead, we try to find someone else to fight them for us. Oh, that's good. You know, yeah, it's not wrong to ask for help, mm. but we shouldn't expect someone else to fight for us when we aren't willing to do it ourselves. Come on, that's good. You know, from one standpoint, you can't defeat an addiction if you're not willing to stop putting yourself in a position right. to right. get that temptation. Yep. Yep. 
good. You know, David, he couldn't use Saul's armor, shield or sword. Stuff's too big, too bold. So David, he went out and stood against all the fear, despair, hopelessness <coughs> on that field that day. Armed with a sling, some stones, and absolute faith that God would prevail and prevent the enemies of Israel Amen. and defeat the enemies of Israel that day. You know, this kid can go out and face an entire army and a giant. You know, why can't us church, good church folk ask a person standing beside us in line at Walmart if they know the Lord? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, why can't we, instead of being discouraged by our situation, rise to the challenge and remember whose child we are. Amen. Uh, you know, this brings me to something else. In the world. You know, sometimes when we're out in the world, kids especially, uh, you can't always carry your, your sword with you yeah. everywhere you go. And as David shows, you don't always need it. Yeah. All you need are some stones. And I really liked all the little kids up here tonight giving their Bible verses. Because some of them had some really, really good ones. Yes. And, uh, you know, David, he went, he got his stones to defeat Goliath. We can use stones or verses that are special to us to defeat the giants we face every day. You know, you don't always take a sword right. to uh, win. Sometimes all we need is faith and a stone. Mm -hmm. You know, pick up some Bible verses you like. Put them in your backpack. Put them in your folder. Put them in your wall. Keep them in your, save them in your phone. Yeah. And whenever things come up in life that seem like a Goliath, Get one of those stones out. Get it out for whatever situation you're in. You know, uh, you know, the same God that delivered David is the same God that will deliver you from your God. Right. You know, what are your gods? What is it that you live in fear of that dominates your life? If we allow our lives to be dominated by someone other than the Holy Spirit of God, we're being defeated by Goliath. You know, is it temper, bitterness, pain from something in our past, fear of the future that scares us? Well, I mean, it's time for the army of the Lord, the church, to remember who's in control. Where our strength lies, we need to forsake our fleshly fears, act boldly, use our stone. And watch our glass drop. Yeah. Uh, my personal, one of my personal stones I've been using right now is uh, I told it to Pastor Brad the other night, but it is uh, Jeremiah twenty nine nineteen.
Ricky can pray with you. I can pray with you. Anyone here can pray with you. <coughs> so, uh, don't you go on to me. But if you need to pray, come on up and pray. We'll slap giant right here. We'll take care of it. 